Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for tuning in to Extreme Witnesses for Christ. I'm your host today, Brother Tony Washington. And today we'll be talking about the dark room part two. Um, today we'll be dealing more so about the shame and the guilt that comes with sin or why we in sin or why we sinning before Christ. It's funny because I think about myself uh, because of this broadcast that I'm doing today. When I first got saved, um, I didn't come to Christ because I felt like I needed him or a born again believer came out to witness to me and I felt convicted through what they had said or if someone saved had prayed for me and that wasn't the case. November of 1998, I had a girlfriend that I was dating at the time and uh, she had got saved of November of 1998, which was fine with me. You know, I didn't bother her. I let her go to church and have all the God she can stand and all the God she wanted. I wasn't trying to get involved or entangled with her like that because I knew she was trying to save her life. I mean, you know, her life and she was trying to change her life. But for whatever the reason is, uh, when she got there, um, this pastor um, made it his business to pull her to the side. And this is what he said to her. He said, the Lord would have me tell you, uh, sister, that uh, he wants to give you the Holy Ghost. But you still have some sin in your life that you have to give up. And that's why you haven't been able to receive it. And she asked the pastor, what sin is that, pastor, that I need to give up, that I haven't already given up already, that I may receive the Holy Ghost? And he got to asking a bunch of questions, and she said, I did, I did, I did. He said, well, it must be something else then I'm missing that I haven't named that you uh, haven't given up yet. She said, I, well, the only thing that I can think of is my boyfriend. He said, that's it. She said, but we're not having sex or anything like that. He said, well, it's got to be your boyfriend. Give up your boyfriend and watch God give you the Holy Ghost. And then I got the phone call uh, from my girlfriend telling me that God wanted her to dump me and uh, she needed to dump me. That the pastor told her that God said he wanted her to dump me and that she needed to dump me in order to receive this Holy Ghost. And I'm sitting there thinking like, OK, now I wouldn't have had a problem with it had God spoke to her and said, dump your boyfriend. But her pastor told her to dump me and said that God said, and I wasn't going out like that. I didn't believe him. I felt he was lying. I felt he was trying to replace me. I felt like he was trying to get me out of the way. Uh, for he could make a move on my woman. And I put in too much work and time to just to walk away and let some man come in the name of God and say that God said and take my woman from me. And I didn't work that way. Not for me. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, and I got instantly got angry. Now, yeah, keep in mind, I'm already a sinner. I got anger issues uh, already. So the anger kicked in, the bitterness kicked in, the, the hatred kicked in, the, the wrath kicked in. And then that's what took me into a dark place. And I, I, then at that time, I got into a dark state and I started having dark thoughts, which put me in a dark room. And that's when I decided at that time, I'm going to kill this guy just like that. I'm going to murder him. I'm going to kill him because I refuse to believe that this man is just going to play me like that. So I purpose in my heart. I made up my mind. I'm heading to this church. I'm going to go get this pastor that's trying to get in my way and stop me from being with my woman. So I did. I went to his church uh, with a purpose in my heart to kill him. And when I got there, the pastor was not there. They were in Sunday school. There was another minister there that was teaching from the Sunday school lesson. So I sat down right in the front, right in front of the minister, because I wasn't sure if he was the pastor or not. I wanted to be close as I could so I wouldn't miss if he was the pastor because I was there to kill him. And I sat right down in the front row and there was this minister and uh, he left the Sunday school lesson, looked me dead in my face. I mean, eyeball to eyeball, stared me down. Didn't know me. I didn't know him. I'd never seen him a day in my life. And he introduced himself. So I'm minister so-and-so. And so I knew then at that time he couldn't be the pastor because the pastor who was the pastor of that church had his name outside of the church. So I knew he wasn't he wasn't the guy I was looking for. And this guy began to just talk to me, look me dead in my face and began to tell me everything about me, who I was and what I was doing and what I thought I was doing. And I mean, he just went all the way back to even my childhood and just opened up so much stuff about me. And I'm sitting there looking at this guy like, who's telling him all this stuff? Because the things he was sharing with me was stuff I did in the dark. Nobody knew nothing about none of that stuff but me, 
maybe Satan, uh, probably God, but nobody else. Uh, my mother was even unaware of some of the stuff I've done. And I'm sitting there shocked. I'm looking like, how does this man know all this stuff? And he kept going and going. And, and at that moment, I felt convicted. I mean, just listening to the words this man was speaking and the scriptures he was using from the Bible, my heart had got convicted and I had a dark heart. And I decided at that time, I'm not going to do this evil that I purpose in my heart to do. I, I got up out of my seat. I walked up out of that church and I left. Didn't even know that I had just had an experience with God. Didn't even know it. Didn't wake up that morning. Didn't go to bed that night thinking this is a tomorrow would be a good day to get saved. Nope. It was the furthest thing from my mind. I had other dreams. I had other visions. I wanted to be the biggest dope dealer this world has ever seen. And I tried. I put every effort, every effort and all my energy into it to be the go to person on the street. That's what I wanted to be. I went at home thinking, wondering how I can go to college and be a doctor or an engineer or become a fireman or a policeman. I had dirt on my mind and things that I wanted to do had nothing to do with anything that was right. Not one time did I ever go to bed and wake up saying, I want to be a minister for Christ. I want to preach the gospel to many. I, that was the furthest thing from my mind. And here it is. I got convicted in the house of God. And God spared me. Now, today I've come in to share with you about the dark room and dark thoughts. And today we come out of the book of John, chapter 8. I'm going to read in verses 1 through 12. And this is a familiar story with you that are familiar with it about the woman in adultery. It reads Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her up in the midst. Now this woman that they, they caught in adultery was in the act of. Verse 4 says, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, she was in sin. She was practicing sin because that's what sinners do. Sinners practice sin. It's what we do. It's what it's the only thing that I can think of that we were actually good at when we were sinners. And she got caught in the act of sinning. And these people that were supposed to be representatives of God, but not Christ, brought this woman out to see Christ, to see what he would say about this woman who they caught in sin. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such shall be stoned. But what says thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lift, lift himself up and said unto them, he that was out sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And again, he stooped back down and wrote on the ground. And then when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. And he said to her, woman, where are thy accusers? I have no man condemned thee. Or have no man condemned thee? Jesus asked her a question. And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now here's this woman standing there, feeling ashamed and guilty and embarrassed because she was inside of a room in clothes matter her own business, sinning, having sex. Sex without marriage is a sin. And there she was sinning. And they bring out before a holy God, a man that had no sin, that knew no sin. And they, here she is standing before Christ, saying to herself, wow, what can I say? I'm guilty as charged. And she's standing there waiting for Christ to condemn him. But Christ never did. 
Christ is the only one that could have condemned her, but he did not. John 3.17 says, God sent his only son into the world, not to, con not to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. Verse 11 tells us that the woman, if you read them, when God told us to go sin no more, you have to ask yourself, why was she still standing there? Because she was repented. She had a repentant heart, which explains why she did not flee when her accusers had left. At that very moment, she realized who she was. At that very moment, she realized who she needed and what she needed. And she needed Christ in her life. At that very moment is when the light bulb finally got turned on, when God brought some light into the dark room where she was at, and she realized, I'm a sinner. And if I don't get myself together soon, I'm not going to make it. And then Christ did the one thing that she never thought he would do, and he didn't condemn her, but he reached out to her in love and said, go and sin no more. Which blew her mind. I'm like, and she had to be sitting there thinking like, God, do you see me? Do you not know? I was just sitting there sinning. It isn't that God did not know who she was and what she was doing. God didn't come to the world for that. Yeah, by right, he can judge us. He could if he wanted to, but he chose not to. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. And that not to be repented of, meaning that at that very moment, that woman became sorrowful for the sins that she had committed. She wanted to repent in order to get saved, and she wasn't going to repeat her sins anymore. She was just like me. She was in sin. God found her in sin. She came to Christ as a sinner, and God allowed her the opportunity to repent and to get herself together and to have a chance and opportunity at salvation just like he did for me. The Bible tells us in John 6 and 65, therefore said I unto you that no man that come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Meaning that every man that comes to Christ at the time they do come to Christ is because the Holy Spirit has drawn them. God has put something on your heart. He's been dealing with you at night. He's been dealing with you during the day. He's been dealing with you while you're out and about. I mean, you came to a point in your life where you felt sorry. You came, you came to a point in your life where you became tired, sick of being sick. You came to a point in your life where you felt empty and that you needed more in life than what you had. And that's how we end up getting saved. It's funny, more sex, more drugs, more opportunities, more this, more that did not fix that emptiness, that loneliness that we had in our hearts. And it was only Christ that can fill it. It was only Christ that can bring us in. It was only Christ that made us feel whole. The Bible tells us in John 6 and 37, all that the Father has given me shall come to me. And he that come to me, I will no wise cast out. Ain't that something? God ain't, thank God he ain't judging us for our sins. Thank God he's not judging us for the things that we've done in the dark room and in the dark places and been in a dark state. Thank God that he reached out and drawed us in with love and kindness. In spite of our sins, he drawed us in. Did you know Isaiah 1 and 18 says, come now, meaning hurry right away without delay, quickly. And let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. But, uh, I had to go and look up the word scarlet. Scarlet means a bright red. So in other words, our sins are like a bright red color to God, meaning we got blood on our hands. And God says, come, come to me with the blood on your hands and I'm going to make you white as snow through sanctification and through salvation. I'm going to make you holy. But it's a learning process that we have to learn to do good. But first, we have to accept the fact and realize we need Christ in our life. We can't get out of the dark room. People say it all the time. When I get myself together, when I get myself right, then, I will, then I'm going to get saved. It'll never happen. We don't have the power to stop sinning. If we did, we'd have been saved a long time ago. It wouldn't have took 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years to get it right. If we can just stop, we can't stop. We can't. That's why we need Jesus Christ to help us to stop the sins that we do commit. 
That's why the first thing God gives us is a renewed mind, giving us a God conscious and making us aware of what's good and what's wrong. Because, come on, it's easy to justify our wrongs with rights and what's right by making it wrong. Isaiah 55 and 7 says, let the wicked forsake his way and an unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Meaning that we're guilty, but not guilty. Imagine that. God giving us all a second chance to get it right. A second chance to get out the dark room. A second chance. My God, thank you, Jesus. Because every time we fall, every time we fail, get God allow us to, according to 1 John 1 and 9, to confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 says, If any man see his brother in sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them. That sin not unto death, but a sin. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that you should pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that whatsoever, what, whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And the wicked one touching him not. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know. That the Son of God is come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. So what that is saying is that if we know anybody in sin, anybody, saint or sinner, we ought to tell them about Christ. That they may have the opportunity to receive life and get out of the dark place, to get out of uh, 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 that dark room and help God to help them to deal with that dark side that they may have about themselves. We are the light of the world. And if we lost our flavor, our drive, our love for God, then who can we help? We got to get out and tell somebody about Jesus. We got to. God saved me, a sinner, a man with evil in his heart and evil on his mind to go do evil to a man of God. God spared me. God spared me when I was out there slanging and pushing drugs and gang banging. God spared me. I've been shot at so many times, I can't even remember. I got so many dead friends that were murdered. They didn't die of natural causes. They were murdered. And God spared me. That's why it's important. That's why we got to get out. That's why we can't waste any more time. We can't waste any more time. The devil has a short time. And our time is even shorter to get ourselves right, to get it together, to get to God. We got to move with some urgency. We got to get up. We got to get on the move. And we got to do it now. Now is the time to tell somebody about Jesus. Not tomorrow, right now about the good news of the faith, the good news of the gospel, about this man, Christ Jesus, who wants to save, who wants to deliver, who wants to set free. And imagine that here's this woman, and God is a God for everybody. I thank God that he gave us the, uh, the story about the woman who, got, who was having sex. She wasn't there to end up praying. She wasn't telling me, I'm going to get saved when I'm done. She, got, she came up before God, and God gave her an opportunity to get herself right by telling her to go and sin no more. Maybe you listen to me right now. Maybe you want that opportunity. Maybe that's you. Maybe you were just like me. You're a real person. I mean, my God, your problems are real. I just happen to be from the street. My God, I got, when I got saved, I was on the street. All I know is the street. But now I'm a minister crying out, get saved, get right, get yourself together. Now I am here right now. My brother, my sister, we can go through the sinner's prayer together right now. As believers, God is no respecter of person. You, you ain't got to get yourself right. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't got to get yourself together. God will do that for you. He will help you get yourself together. He will help you get yourself right. Come on. We come out of the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. This is the sinner's prayer. But first, we got to go through the confession first in order for you to receive Christ Jesus into your heart. The Bible says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Repeat this prayer with me, if you will. It goes like this. Dear God, 
I confess that I am a sinner and that I need your forgiveness. I'm truly sorry for my sins, all of my sins, all the sins I know about, all the sins I don't know about, and all the sins I don't want to talk about. I humbly ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross in my place. Then he rose again for my salvation. In faith, I accept from you the gift of eternal life. And with your help, I promise to serve you as long as I live. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Saints of God, please uh, get out and tell somebody today about Jesus Christ. Who the Son set free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We got to get out and tell somebody about Christ. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for, for even listening to these broadcasts. Um, we appreciate it. And we thank God for it.